Hello, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Holly Shields. Welcome you all to another edition of Calkine TV's Executive Corner Expert Talks. Today, we're narrowing in on a pioneer community-driven platform that breaks down traditional barriers and enables a fractional economy. Koya allows users to buy, collect, and trade in alternative investments. And joining us today to share their insights is co-founder Iris Tentaya. Welcome to the show, Iris. It's great to have you with us. Hey, thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure to have you on. First and foremost, congratulations on raising 1.4 million in pre-seed funding to make alternative assets available. That is a major milestone. What lies ahead of this funding? Yeah, so we raised our pre-seed round sort of towards the end of last year. And obviously this is just the beginning. Uh, this amount of funding, it enables us to really get our platform out there, uh, get people to know about it and really test uh, test the demand and test what sort of assets people are most, most interested in. So sort of the stage that we're at now, we have recently launched our platform to the public. We've got a couple of assets uh, live on a platform. For example, at the moment, we've got a Rolex watch as well as a, a vintage Pokemon box with a couple of more exciting assets coming up, such as uh, rare whiskeys, as well as NFTs and um, art. So we're really uh, just getting out there and um, just getting started and getting people to to, to know about us. So um, how long has the platform been live? So we started the company around a year ago. And the first year for us was a lot of figuring out and doing research in terms of what people wanted, but also figuring out the legal and regulatory sides of this business. As it is a very new business model, a fractionalization of physical assets, there were a lot of things that we had to uh, figure out, things that hadn't been done before. Um, also, uh, I'm, per I'm personally based in the UK. We've got our team based out of Europe. So we had to make sure that, you know, what we're doing was legally compliant in different markets that we wanted to uh, be active in. So that took us some time. Uh, ultimately, we decided to set uh, to, to um, use a structure using NFTs and we we're linking these NFTs, these non-fungible tokens. We are linking those to uh, the underlying physical assets and the NFTs enable the users to then uh, own fractions of these assets as, and also they can trade the NFTs as well as um, hold the NFTs and, and, and vote for, for, for a potential future asset still. So that whole structure took us a while to figure out. Uh, then um, after we sort of set that up and we're really confident with our structure, then we really started building our platform. So we've only launched our platform uh, last month. Uh, so it's very new, very, very recent and very, very exciting to now get um, users on the platform. That's incredible. I mean, it sounds like it's just been an amazing journey so far. A lot of uh, hurdles there, but uh, you've managed to to uh, surmount all of them. Uh, and I think that's been to your benefit there, but um, a great, uh, great journey so far. We definitely uh, look forward to seeing the rest of everything you've got going on. It's sounds like it's still early days there for you, but um, you did mention a, a range of different assets, I think. And um, these are what many people would class as alternative assets, but um, what's your sort of definition of the, of the alternative assets you offer? And what do you think is their appeal to investors? Yeah, so alternative assets is a pretty broad term. Um, typically, it includes anything not stocks or bonds. So probably the most well-known alternative asset class would be real estate. Um, also, other types of alternative assets include uh, venture capital, private equity. So investing in private companies, all of those are um, part of sort of the alternative asset mix. However, uh, what we are focused on at Koya are collectibles. So that's what we're starting off with. And collectibles themselves are almost are a almost 400 US dollar, 400 billion dollar um, annual market. Uh, so the types of assets that we're looking at, or we're saying collectibles, are assets like watches, whiskey, fine wine, trading cards, art. So those are really the types of assets that we are focused on with Koya. Obviously, there's also other, other platforms that are focused on some of the other assets that I mentioned earlier, like real estate or like venture capital. And I think that is also very exciting because there's a couple of platforms now globally, mostly still in the US, that are opening up those types of asset classes as well, with like startup investing and crowdfunding, etc. But yeah, for Koya, very much focused on, on a collectibles market. 
I would say there's three main benefits of why people might want to get involved in this uh, in alternative assets and investing in alternative assets. So the first one is sort of fun and passion. So one of the reasons why people buy art, of course, is because they simply enjoy art. They like watching. Uh, they they like they like they like looking at it. They like it as decoration in their home. Same with watches or cars. Some wealthy people they don't buy it at all. With perhaps an investment angle in mind, it's purely for the for the enjoyment. Um, when it comes to fractional, of course, that is typically a little bit less of a consideration, especially because in most cases the product won't be able to be to be used because we really want to keep it in the right condition. However, I would say there's still an element of that, uh, of the, of that emo- there's still a bit of an element of, of that emotional connection. And it's cool to own a piece of a Picasso or a Banksy if you're an art lover. So there is still that emotional connection. Um, then I would say there's also two other major reasons why people want to get involved. Uh, one is capital appreciation. So to give a few a few numbers, so if we're looking at, for example, Rare Whiskies, um, they've gone up by around 400% over the past 10 years. Uh, that data comes from Rare Whiskey 101, their Rare Whiskey 1000 index. Uh, if you're looking at an uh, asset like Fine Wines, they've had around a 50% uh, five-year return. That comes from like Livex, one of the biggest wine uh, data providers. But there's also some categories that have really boomed over the past five or ten years looking at for example t- trading cards so that's typically things like pokemon cards but uh, more so like baseball cards for example uh, they've gone up by more than a thousand percent over the past ten years a uh, data comes from pwcc so it's a marketplace for trading cards so those uh, type so these types of assets do have a potential to to go up in value which is obviously why a lot of people want to get involved uh, and I would say lastly it's always important but especially probably in the current sort of market is diversification so depending on the assets that we're looking at uh, some of them are not very correlated to the stock market which is obviously makes it an interesting addition to like um, an equities uh, portfolio for some of the newer asset classes, there's not that much research that has really been done yet in terms of correlation, but especially with, 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 with assets like Fine One, which is something that people have used as an investment for many, many decades, there has been, you know, st- there have been studies conducted that, you know, it's not very correlated to the, to the stock market, which makes it an interesting way to diversify a portfolio. So just to repeat, one, passion, two, sort of capital appreciation, and three, uh, diversification. Absolutely. I think you really uh, hit the nail on the head there. These uh, these collectibles are incredibly valuable in the market, and I think that only goes up with time. And like you said, I think especially diversification is really crucial, as we've seen recently. Um, even crypto, for example, tends to follow the traditional stock market, um, so it's, I think, I can imagine very beneficial to have assets that are sort of uh, valuable on their lonesome, which is a really, really important there. But, um, you know, speaking of the value of these assets, how are they stored? Because I understand the physical assets must be must be stored, even though they are uh, perhaps connected as NFTs, but there are still uh, physical assets that need to be secured. How do you manage that? Yeah, so in the case of Koya, we take care of the sourcing, the storage. So the benefit is not only the fractional piece, meaning that, you know, our users can get in with much lower amounts. The other benefit is the hassle that normally comes with alternative assets is something that we take care of. When it comes to storage, it depends on the type of assets. So for example, um, items like watches or uh, Pokemon cards, they so- they're stored in a safety deposit box. Uh, we're also always listing in our app exactly which facility we're using. Um, And when it comes to items like whiskey, for example, or wine, they cannot be stored in the same location because it has to be stored in a specific type of storage location that has the right temperature, humidity conditions. So that is stored in a um, so-called bonded storage facility that has the right conditions for storing these types of items. Right. Well, it sounds like you are going the extra mile there to keep these assets uh, very much secure. So that's uh, very good and very important. And I would say it, it is also if you don't store them in the right locations, 
um, it becomes very difficult to then sell them on because a lot of these locations, they are well known within the community. So they keep rec they keep a record saying, okay, this item has been received by our facility at this date. Um, and then if you know we want to sell it on in the future, obviously it really helps to have that record of provenance especially in this industry, because there are issues with counterfeits or fraud. So it's really important to keep that record of where it's been stored so that, you know, we can um, sell it as it on in the future. Absolutely. I think that's a really interesting point that uh, authenticity is really important when it comes to a collectible collectibles rather, especially. So uh, very, uh, very crucial there. And just before we wrap up, I'd love to know what we can look forward to seeing from Koya in the upcoming year. Yes, yeah, so what is really exciting is that we'll have more and bigger assets coming up in the next couple of months. So uh, you can head to our website, that's joinquoia.com to check out sort of the assets that are uh, coming up. I think there is something for everyone. I'm personally pretty excited about not only the physical assets that we're fractionalizing, but we've also got a few blue chip high value NFTs that we are fractionalizing because of course, NFTs are really popular right now. And a lot of them are too expensive, especially the top ones and the ones that I would say are actually um, the best investments. They're too expensive for individual buyers to buy. So that is, I think, really exciting. Um, yeah, so keep an eye out for our upcoming asset drops. You're right. That is very exciting indeed. You've got some big things happening there. So we'll definitely uh, keep an eye out for those asset drops and for the expansion of your uh, product offering and your platform as well. But uh, with that said, thanks very much for uh, joining us here on Executive Corner Expert Talks. It's been really great to hear from you today, Iris. Thank you, Holly. Thanks very much for your time. If you've just joined us, that was Iris Tentea, the co-founder of Koya. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview on our YouTube channel at Calkine Media and make sure to subscribe. I'm Holly Shields, reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine.